Hi everyone, I'm Whitney and I'm a registered dental hygienist here to talk about the differences between nano hydroxyapatite toothpaste and fluoride toothpaste. Which one is better? Fluoride in toothpaste versus nano hydroxyapatite in toothpaste. Both are ingredients used to help prevent cavities and strengthen tooth enamel, offering anti-sensitivity benefits, improving the health of your teeth. While it's true that nano hydroxyapatite is similar to the natural building blocks of our teeth, and studies show it can remineralize enamel, thus help prevent against cavities, currently there is more robust research supporting fluoride's benefits on cavity prevention because when fluoride Fluoride binds with your tooth enamel, it forms a structure that is actually more resistant to acids and tooth decay than the original tooth surface of hydroxyapatite. So when fluoride is applied to teeth through sources like toothpaste, mouthwashes, etc., it interacts with hydroxyapatite, the mineral compound that tooth enamel is made of. You have hydroxyapatite in your teeth, it's always there. And then when the fluoride interacts with it, it actually forms a more decay resistant material known as fluorapatite. This process process is a mineralization enhancement where fluoride ions replace some of the hydroxide ions in hydroxyapatite to form fluorapatite. This new compound, fluorapatite, is more resistant to acid attacks from bacteria in the mouth. Acid is what leads to cavities. So it's preventing the demineralization of teeth and promoting remineralization better than hydroxyapatite can itself. The reason why it's slightly better at doing this is because hydroxyapatite begins to dissolve at a pH of 5.5, whereas fluorapatite remains stable until the pH drops to 4.5, making teeth more resistant resistant to decay in more acidic environments. The lower the pH in your mouth, the more acidic it is. And again, acidic environments in the mouth are where cavities happen. So by one pH level, fluoride toothpaste is better. So for my cavity prone patients, I recommend fluoride toothpaste. It's better at remineralizing teeth and it is approved by the American Dental Association. Whereas nano hydroxyapatite, although similar in composition to natural tooth enamel, it is not yet approved by the American Dental Association. I think it has great potential. However, the advertisement choice of wording on most nano hydroxyapatite toothpaste brands is weird to me. Lots of them say that it's a natural alternative to fluoride. Sure, it's an alternative, but natural nano hydroxyapatite needs to be synthetically made in a lab since it doesn't exist on earth in the same form. Sure, hydroxyapatite is found naturally on earth, but so is fluoride. You can find both naturally, but with toothpaste, they are both created in labs to become either nano hydroxyapatite appetite or sodium fluoride, stannous fluoride, whatever the case. It's not a bad thing. Most everything we use is created in labs, right? Makeup, shampoo, lotion. It's just worth noting the advertisement choices. Since most of the nano hydroxyapatite toothpastes advertise it by saying it's natural. You can easily say fluoride toothpaste is natural too. Regardless of that, it's beside the point. But it's worth noting since most of the nano hydroxyapatite toothpastes get people to buy their products because they say it's natural. Something to think about. In all, fluoride has been studied for 90 plus years, starting in the 1930s, where nano hydroxyapatite is newer. It did exist in the 1970s, but it didn't start to gain more traction in research until the early 2000s. So for fluoride, thousands of these studies throughout the years have been conducted globally, and research has reflected the widespread consensus within the dental and scientific communities about fluoride's benefits. It has been extensively studied and widely used in toothpaste for its ability to prevent tooth decay. Like we said, the American Dental Association has the seal of acceptance on fluoride-based products, as well as the World Health Organization and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommend the use of fluoride toothpaste for preventing against cavities. Its effectiveness is one of the most well-documented findings in dental health. It's not just me saying this, it's supported by thousands of clinical trials, epidemiological studies, and meta-analyses compiling data from multiple research reports to provide overarching conclusions about fluoride's benefits and safety. I will We'll link sources below. Nano hydroxyapatite just has not been studied for as long as fluoride, and it is not yet recommended by any reputable health organization. It seems promising from the limited research we have. It does seem to have a similar effect on enamel as fluoride. However, again, remember that fluoride, after binding with tooth enamel, makes the teeth more resistant to acid attacks and cavities. Fluoride wins. I recommend fluoride. But before we go, I always want to be open-minded because yes, more and more studies are coming out about 
nanohydroxyapatite used in dental products. There are hundreds of studies, but they are still not as extensive or robust as the thousands of studies on fluoride. But as of today, we just know more about the pros and cons of fluoride, the risks and benefits of fluoride toothpaste than we do for nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste. Nanohydroxyapatite is interesting due to its biocompatibility and similarity to natural tooth mineral. Researchers and companies in the dental industry are looking at it as a potential alternative or even a complement to traditional fluoride treatments. And maybe one day we'll find out that nanohydroxyapatite turns out to be the miracle for teeth. If so, great. But until then, what we know now is that fluoride toothpaste strengthens and remineralizes tooth enamel better. And that's that. It shouldn't be a controversial topic, but if you have heard about the misinformation circulating on social media about fluoride, calling fluoride toxic, you have to understand that fluoride is not toxic at the levels that we are exposed to. There's no conspiracy there. I have a whole video explaining the facts, how everything can be toxic at a certain dose. The toxicity is in the dose. As long as you're not eating tubes of toothpaste daily, eating it, consuming it, then there's no potential for fluoride toxicity. I explain it all in my video, which I will link below if you want to learn more. But for the purpose of this video, just remember that although many studies show that both fluoride and nanohydroxyapatite toothpastes prevent against cavities, when you really review the science, fluorapatite, like we said earlier, is superior at combating acids in your mouth. It's better at fighting against tooth decay in a more acidic environment, thus preventing cavities. So for my cavity prone patients, like I said, I recommend fluoride toothpaste. And if you're not cavity prone, or if you're someone who just prefers to use nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste, you're in charge of your own body. You do you. Just keep in mind that most nanohydroxyapatite toothpastes are not FDA approved, whereas most fluoride toothpastes are FDA approved. If you're only using non-fluoride toothpaste because you're scared that fluoride is toxic or you thought you were being more natural, please know that fluoride is not toxic at the levels we are exposed to. Again, I will link my video below if you want to learn more about that. Some companies who sell the non-fluoride paste will just say that all competing products are bad without any explanation. They stretch the truth about fluoride to make it sound bad just to get you to buy their product, not to mention their way more expensive product. Nanohydroxyapatite is 10 times more expensive than fluoride and it requires a higher concentration, about 10% in toothpaste. That's the formulation where most of the nanohydroxyapatite research shows its effectiveness. The issue I have with this is that there are not many brands. Most brands do not contain the full 10% in their toothpastes. So I'm all about the nanohydroxyapatite according to the research that we have. But if the company doesn't put the 10% formula in their product, then how do we know its effectiveness if there's no research on those concentrations? Yet again, why I am hesitant to ever recommend something that has limited research and isn't FDA approved nor ADA approved. I think it's interesting how some people are so comfortable pushing products so hard without all of the facts. I like to think I have an open mind. I think the potential of nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste is great. Like I said, there appears to be benefits, but research is so limited. I can't be promoting something like it is better than something else, something else that has been proven to be safe and effective. We shouldn't be scaring people into using alternative methods without knowing if there's any risks. But luckily, we all get to choose which toothpaste we want to use. This video was just to provide an evidence-based perspective. And personally, I've had far too many patients switch to non-fluoride and next time I see them, they have cavities. So I hope this video helps improve dental public health. I will say though, one last thing. Oftentimes, those who switch to a non-fluoride toothpaste and get cavities, it's usually because they are switching to a xylitol only toothpaste. I love xylitol and it's a great ingredient for dental health. However, it's not even on the same level of how we're talking about on this video, the fluoride and the nanohydroxyapatite. They can be compared. They are on a different level than xylitol. I will link that video of mine below as well. Quick recap, if you have a toothpaste that contains both xylitol and fluoride, awesome, or both xylitol and nanohydroxyapatite, cool. But if it's xylitol only and you don't like fluoride, then definitely consider using a nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste. The nanohydroxyapatite studies are much more comparable to fluoride than the xylitol studies. Xylitol is a great addition, but nobody's saying it's a replacement. In all, always talk with your dentist and your dental hygienist about which toothpaste is best for your individual mouth, since they know your mouth best. We covered a lot in this video. Video. I hope it helped you. Please like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications if it did. Share this with someone that you think it might help. And a quick shout out to the Teeth Talk Patreon and the YouTube members here supporting this channel and supporting dental health awareness. If you want to join the fight in making sure evidence-based dental health information is being shared online, 
become part of our Teeth Talk community. The links to join are in the description below. And until then, I'll see you on Instagram at Teeth Talk Girl. Peace, love, and teeth.